If you've ever released music on Spotify, then you know how it, it isn't exactly the most lucrative way to make money with your music. I mean, all the effort that goes into making a song, let alone releasing it and marketing it, it's just never really seemed proportional when it comes to getting paid. But what if you could remove all of that effort entirely? What if you could just release a bunch of low effort music and actually make some money? Quantity over quality. Well, that wouldn't really make sense, right? Who's actually going on Spotify and listening to bad music? I mean, I can barely even get people to listen to music that I've put a ton of effort into. Quality always beats quantity, right? Well, not really. You are watching Sound Learn. Last week, I came across this thread on Reddit by user Goa Elephant titled, Is AI Creating Recycled Music on Spotify? Obviously, that piqued my interest, so I checked it out. It turns out Goa Elephant was trying to build this massive electronic music playlist that would include any and every song they could find that would fit the electronic genre category when they noticed something off. A bunch of the songs started to all sound the same. I mean, these songs literally sound the same. They're using the exact same samples, just slightly modified. This isn't just another unfortunate case of two different artists using the same sample. This is multiple artists using the same samples. Hold on, it gets weirder. These artists don't exist. There's no bio or pictures, no information on the internet when you search their names, there's nothing. They're digital ghosts whose sole purpose is to release a variation of the same song over and over and over and over and over. And the album covers? Yeah, they're stock photos. Doing a reverse image search for them leads you to dozens of links on various stock photo licensing websites where you can license the image for yourself. So what is happening here? Well, I did some digging. And the answer is pretty simple. Fraud. It's always fraud, isn't it? Well, sorta. It's a gray area. Let me explain. Spotify and other streaming services pay out fractions of a penny for every play, or a pity, as Wolfpack ringleader Jack Stratton jokingly put it. I was supposed to understand their artist payout. You, you need a new currency. I call it, I call it the pity. There are a hundred pennies in a dollar, a hundred pities in a penny. If you've ever released a song on Spotify, you know how unlucrative streaming services are. I mean, my own band has been around since 2018 with over half a million plays in total, and we've barely even broken a thousand dollars in revenue. It's not exactly a quit your job kind of revenue stream, even if you're an artist with a few million plays in your catalog. Between buying recording equipment or renting out studio time, hiring a mixing and mastering engineer, paying distributor fees, licensing artwork, or hiring an artist to design you an original album cover, promotion costs, and a ton of other fun ways to bleed money when releasing music. Streaming services are not a way to make money unless you're getting millions and millions of streams, which usually means writing multiple hit songs. And look, if it was easy to write a hit song, everybody would be writing hit songs. The reality is, when you release a song, you'll be lucky to get a couple thousand plays on it. Release an album? Cool. Maybe you'll even get a million plays total. But what if there was a way to game the system? Our pal Jack from Wolfpack actually did just that a few years back when he released an entirely silent album called Sleepify under Wolfpack's artist profile. The idea was simple. Tell your fans to stream your new silent album while they sleep. Spotify doesn't count plays if you're listening to an album on mute, and you can't realistically expect a ton of people to loop your album if they have to listen to it non-stop. That would drive anyone crazy. So why not just release an album that's nothing but silence and tell people to loop that? Well, Jack did just that with the promise that whatever money was made from Sleepify's streams would be used to fund a free Wolfpack tour. The result was over $20,000 generated from an album that contained nothing but silence. 
and Jack made good on his promise with the free Sleepify tour later that year. Spotify caught wind of this fun little experiment and, well, they weren't too happy. They did allow Wolfpack to keep the revenue made from the Sleepify album, but eventually took down the album and instituted a new unintentional music policy to prevent artists from releasing noise and taking advantage of the revenue system. But as rules evolve, so do new ways to circumvent them. This is where the Reddit thread from the beginning of this video comes in. The new rules from Spotify declared that a song must be at least 60 seconds long and contain actual musical content to be eligible for streaming revenue. Given that music is so subjective, Spotify can't just decide what is or isn't legitimate music so long as it has some musical elements, whether that be rhythmic or melodic, you know, that kind of stuff. The obvious loophole here is just to make a bunch of one minute songs and release them as you finish them. But that would still take some effort. You'd still need to manually record and export some kind of music and that takes time. Even if you were putting out a few dozen songs a day, the manual effort would probably not be worth the pennies you might make in revenue. Not to mention that if you were to release hundreds of songs a day as a single artist, it would inevitably set off some alarms at Spotify and you might get your account banned. But what if you could release thousands of songs a day across hundreds of different artist names? And what if on top of that, you didn't even have to actually produce the music and you could just have AI do it for you? Well, after a bit of research, it looks like that's exactly what's happening here. Dozens upon dozens of seemingly random artists with absolutely no following and no history prior to releasing these songs have started popping up all over Spotify. The same one minute song endlessly being uploaded with only the slightest of variations that the average person probably wouldn't even pick up on. It's impossible to prove without a direct contact with the label who's putting these out, but it seems blatantly clear that some kind of AI, or at the very least, a script, is creating these songs using the same samples. It's certainly possible there's a person just manually rearranging samples and exporting them over and over again, but I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose of the scheme if that were the case. See, the goal here is volume, not the actual content. Even if each song is generating less than a dollar, if you're spreading it out across thousands of songs, eventually it will add up to something that is more than just a little extra beer money. But something was still not adding up, because that would mean that you would need to create thousands of songs to generate anything meaningful, assuming you only got a few plays on each song. Which got me thinking, who's listening to these songs anyway? I mean, they can't possibly be getting more than a few plays each. 22,000? How in the world did 22,000 people stumble on this completely random artist who has just one 60 second song out? 22,000 is not a massive amount of streams by today's standards, but it's still nothing to scoff at. And to top it off, this isn't a one-off fluke. Almost every song in question has well over 10,000 plays on Spotify. On average, 10,000 plays on Spotify will roughly generate around $23 in revenue. If we were to generate 1,000 of these songs and they all eventually broke 10,000 plays, we're talking about upwards of $23,000 in revenue for what is essentially the same terrible, soulless, one-minute song. So what the f is happening here? Well, kids, it's time to put on your conspiracy theory caps. As a disclaimer, I'm not going to go ahead and say that any of this is fact, merely my own speculation from this point forward. Nothing I say should be taken as fact, so please don't sue me. Anyway, something interesting happens when you use the artist radio feature on one of these songs. Suddenly, Spotify just conveniently starts feeding you not only every song that uses the same samples as the song the radio is based off of, but other AI-generated songs. It basically serves as a portal into this AI-generated song fraud ring. If you never stop it, you'll literally just be set on an infinite loop of fake one-minute songs forever. To understand why this happens, you need to understand how Spotify's radio algorithm works. I'm actually working on a separate video deep diving into that whole topic, so maybe you should subscribe if you haven't already. But anyways, 
To simplify it for the sake of this video, when creating a radio station from a single song, Spotify looks for songs with similar musical elements such as tempo, song key, intensity, and length. It also takes into consideration any crossover other listeners might have with other artists. So for example, if a bunch of fans of Taylor Swift also happen to love Harry Styles, the algorithm safely assumes that you, a new Taylor Swift fan checking out her radio station, might also like Harry Styles. And this is why Spotify's radio algorithm pushes other AI-generated songs that use different samples into these radio stations. The people listening to these songs also happen to be huge fans of other AI-generated artists. Hmm, I wonder why that could be. Look, it isn't a huge leap in logic to consider that the kind of people generating a bunch of fake songs to game the revenue system would also probably be the same kind of people to use some kind of bot farm to rack up plays on these songs. And to be honest, you wouldn't even need that many bots. If there are 1,440 minutes in a day, that means one person could theoretically listen to 1,440 of these one minute songs every 24 hours. Looping the same song over and over would probably be too obvious and Spotify would catch on pretty quickly. But if we were to simply leave our trusty bot running on a radio station of hundreds of songs that we've created, suddenly it becomes a lot harder for Spotify to think you might be a bot. With just 10 bots, you could easily generate over 10,000 plays across 24 hours. 10 bots would be incredibly hard to detect. You could even do it legitimately by setting up extremely basic PCs that do nothing but run Spotify using something like a Raspberry Pi for as little as 15 bucks a pop. Given that the revenue is going all to the same distributor, they don't care where those 10,000 plays are coming from. It's all going to add up to the same amount of revenue in the end. Even with just 10 bots, we're potentially looking at $30 a day. I mean, realistically, that number is probably much higher because let's be real, why would you stop at 10 bots? Once you start to put all of these factors together, the big picture becomes a bit more clear. These songs were never meant to be discovered. Hiding in plain sight was always the plan, but it shouldn't come as a surprise that some of these tracks eventually started randomly popping up on other legitimate playlists. Users have brought up the issue to Spotify directly only to have them sort of shrug off the issue. Annoying, sure, but it begs the question, why should you care about any of this? Well, in my opinion, it's an indication of a bigger issue on the internet. The internet used to be an open, wild west kind of space where it felt like anything was fair game. Creativity was rampant and it felt like there was really no rules for better or worse. But as the real world began to bleed further and further into the digital realm, the internet lost a bit of its wonder and it became a commodity. Something to be exploited for monetary gain. I mean, I'm doing it right now. Whether I like it or not, this video is going to generate revenue for someone. It was never really my choice. Even if I decided not to opt in for a cut of the revenue, someone else would be seeing the fruits of the work that I've done. And therein lies the point. With the freedom to instantly listen to any single song in existence for free, we've commoditized creativity to the point where it's now feasible to exploit the platforms that host our creativity for nothing else than money, completely losing on any sense of art along the way. I don't buy into the sensationalist theory that AI is going to replace artists, filmmakers, and musicians, or anything like that. Humans will keep making beautiful art as long as we have the ability to make a sound or put paint to canvas. What I do worry about, though, is AI destroying the platforms we've all essentially become forced to use to share our art. Artificial intelligence is creating an avenue for the bare minimum to thrive in an internet that values monetary potential more than creativity. And look, I don't have any solutions or advice. It's a problem bigger than me or you, but I do think it's important to be aware of how things are changing right in front of us. Maybe it's a sign that we shouldn't worry too much about making perfect art. Maybe we can leave uninspired perfection to AI and get back to the early internet days where being rough around the edges was kind of the point. And Maybe this video doesn't have to end perfectly. Maybe this video can just 